Okay, uh, wonderful people, welcome back. <clears throat> Hope you had a good break. I got some coffee and chai. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> Great, uh, let's go on. Let's continue from where we left. Okay. Uh, this session will continue addressing some important questions, um, you know, regarding healing and deliverance, a very common questions that we uh, we tend to have. Okay, um, so one classic question, I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but I have heard of, uh, you know, people asking me this question. In fact, that even I have asked this question um, is, since God is sovereign, uh, you know, why won't he just, you know, it's like, Lord, there are so many unbelievers on earth. You are sovereign, all powerful. Why don't you just show up in all your glory and, you know, everybody will just fall, you know? Um, like it says, you know, one day every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Let that day come now, you know. <laughs> Listen, just show, you know, if everybody sees your holiness and how, you know, how you know magnificent you are, everybody will just, you know, why won't you do that? Have you asked that question? Or is it just me? Okay, I guess it's just me. But, <laughs> right, so since God is sovereign, won't he just heal people uh, if and whenever he wants to? Okay, so what do you understand by the word sovereign? Sovereign matlab kya? Okay. Sorry, someone said something. All powerful. All powerful, yeah. So, rain, the second half of that word is rain, R E I G N, isn't it? I hope I spelled it right. <laughs> Right, but so reign is what you are ruling, okay? Sov means single. So we are saying single reign. That's what sovereign means, okay? Single reign. Uh, you are the king of all kings. Uh, his kingdom will have no end. We say that, isn't it? God's kingdom will have no end. That means single reign authority so when we say that god is sovereign we act, we are saying like you know what was shared that he is all powerful uh, he he there is no end to his reign okay uh, and so we understand that and it is from that place we ask okay lord we understand that you are sovereign uh, why can't you just show up and heal everybody right and uh, and that question uh, the answer to that question is kind of uh, we will address that in three different parts as mentioned in your notes okay um i'm going to be just flow, going uh, reading from your, uh, the notes that we have so that we are all on the same page okay uh, we will address this question in three parts one is the sovereignty of god and the responsibility of man second one the sovereignty of god and the exercise of faith and thirdly we walk by the truth that has been revealed and search out what is unknown. Okay? So the first one is the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man. Again, we are going back to those uh, that word called commission, co-partner, co-mission. Right? Uh, that something about God who, who doesn't have to partner with us. Why? Because he's sovereign. Yes or no? Uh, he doesn't have to pick out a person called Noah. He doesn't have to. He didn't have to pick up a person called Abraham. Right? Abraham and God are having this dialogue. Abraham is standing in the gap for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lord, if there is a ten people, will you spare this? And there's a dialogue that is happening. <laughs> it is, but just in that case, the dialogue is between divinity and humanity. It's like a conversation between an adult and a young child. Isn't I don't have to explain myself. It's like you know, uh, but but God enjoys that. He loves to have that dialogue with his children, isn't it? Uh, and uh, think about another instance where God is having this dialogue with Moses. Uh, you know, and saying God is saying these are stiff-necked people. I'm not going to come with you. And Moses is having this conversation. Uh, you know, if you don't come, we will not go ahead. And by the way, they are not my people. They are your people. Uh, I didn't deliver them. You deliver them. <laughs> you know, it's it's so wonderful that he inviting us into this partnership with him. Even though he doesn't have to. 
he takes great joy in doing his work with you, with us. Does anybody feel honored by that? I feel immensely honored that he would invite me into partner with him when he doesn't have to. Right? And so that's what the first point is all about, is the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man. That means there is a responsibility that we've been given to us. Psalm 115, verse 3 and verse 16. Verse 3 is my favorite verse. Okay, Psalm 115, verse 3. It's like, it's an answer to a lot of questions when I don't know the answer. <laughs> Psalm 115, verse 3 says, But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. <laughs> Okay, our God is in heaven, he does whatever he pleases. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you don't have an answer to any question, it's like, yeah, he's in heaven, he is God, he will do whatever he pleases. What's your problem? If you have a problem with that, go deal with it. <laughs> hey, why are you worshipping a certain way? You know, why is he moving a certain way? You know, hey, he's God, he'll do whatever he you know pleases. Um, think about it. Right? Uh, verse 16, it says, The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. He's given it to us. That means, you remember this command in uh, Genesis chapter 1, where it says, Be fruitful and multiply. That we have taken it very seriously. Okay. It's like, yes, Lord. Thumbs up. Be fruitful and multiply. In thus. You know? Uh, but we, again, it's like, uh, we call it as selective listening, no? Like, okay, you will only listen what you want to hear and leave off the rest, right? In that command, he goes on to say that have dominion. Have dominion. That means you have the responsibility. I have given you authority to reign over the creation. Are you with me? And so he's given us this command. He said, the earth, I have given it to you. You reign over it. It's your responsibility. And so God, even in his sovereignty, in his all, you know, he did not interfere when Adam and Eve were about to partake in the fruit. He could have, isn't or not? He could have prevented from everything that happened. It's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to send my son to die for your sins. man. I'm going to step in right now and stop you from me. No, he did not do that. Although he could have. Right? You, you understand the power of this responsibility he's been given to us? Yes or no? Right? Uh, I mean, this is this classic uh, example of uh, an house owner and a tenant. Right? So you you are uh, you are a tenant in someone's house. Right? Okay. So I have so Joseph is. I keep using Joseph as an example because he's sitting right in front of me. Like Joseph is the house owner. I was like, okay, owner, owner. I want to you know rent your house. Uh, it's like, okay, sure, no problem. Uh, so, as a tenant, it is my responsibility to close the door at night. It is my responsibility as a tenant, uh, because I'm living in that house, to clean the house, to, to you know, vacuum, to mop the floor, to dust the fans. To, you know, it is my responsibility as a tenant. Now, just because I don't clean, I don't keep my house clean. Uh, I, you know, I forgot to close the door in the night. I, because of which, uh, you know, a thief came and robbed all my belongings and went. Am I going to blame Joseph, or is it right for me to blame Joseph? Hey, Joseph, owner, it's your house. Why you didn't do anything? Why you didn't come and clean my fan? Yes or no? Although the owner has a certain power, authority, right? But then there is a certain responsibility that has been given to the tenant, isn't it? Yes or no? Okay. Now there are so many accidents that happen on the highways of India, all over the world. Yes or no? Um, <laughs> but do you still have to drive carefully and responsibly? Yeah. You can't drink alcohol and then choose to drive and then blame the Minister of Transport. Yes.
you can't fail in your exam and then blame you know saying <laughs> you know uh, we can like no this teacher i did not understand you know whatever this uh, you know this roshan is teaching is like is uh, that's why i failed <laughs> i did that when i failed in hindi <laughs> but you see there's a, there's an element of responsibility that you we have to take as people of god isn't it um so he is sovereign but we take responsibility with him we co-partner with him that's why we say yes to his call isn't it right um let's move on and the second point it talks about is the sovereignty of god and the exercise of faith now while we are being responsible while taking responsibility it is also an expression of faith when you minister healing and deliverance you are taking the step of faith why because you are not the healer right i am not the healer i'm just a vessel or tool that is like yes lord i want i'm willing to co-partner with you i'm willing to you know be on this mission with you so let me be the vessel you be the healer and you minister through me in and through me and what is that that is an expression of faith are you following right there's a chapter much later like i just said everything that applies to minister healing and deliverance the same things apply to receive healing and deliverance okay it is it's as important but we'll get to that much later so sovereignty of god and exercise of faith um and then we walk by truth that has been revealed and search out what is unknown uh, deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29 Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29 it says the secret things belong to the Lord our God but those things which are revealed belong to us and our children forever that we may dwell do that we may do all the words of this law okay the secret things belongs to the Lord in Proverbs 25 verse 2 it says it is the glory of God to conceal a matter but the glory of kings is to search out a matter a such a beautiful verse it is the glory of god to conceal a matter but the glory of kings is to search out a matter that means again this is god inviting us to play hide and seek with him have you and has anyone played hide and seek with kids yes i mean you can be very uh, mean to the kid and completely hide yourself or if you're playing hide and seek uh, or peekaboo you know with children or with babies you will hide in a way that they will they can see you isn't it right okay you go hide behind this pillar and it's very easy for them to see that you know that they, they can look at you so it's that god has not hidden things from us he has hidden things for us i'll say that again God has not hidden things from us. He has hidden for us. That means he wants us to come into this game and play, to search, to go after him, to pursue him, to seek that intimate relationship with him. It's like, "Hey, come, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you." Are you following? Right? Uh it's uh, he wants us to be partake, uh, you know, go on this journey to uh to search uh you know to pursue him his presence and so that's uh, hence this point that says we walk by truth that has been revealed what has been revealed to us we know jesus is our healer we know it is god's will to heal everyone we know the cross is for everyone we know the basis of it it is god's nature to heal everyone yes or no holy spirit has been given to us jesus said it is better for me that i go away so that the helper will come why is all of that that all of that has been revealed to us isn't it in the word of god yes or no yes and so we function based on the truth that has been revealed to us and then continue to search out what is unknown for his wisdom right like proverbs 25 verse 2 says it is the glory of god to conceal a matter but the glory of the kings is to search out a matter yeah um okay let's move on uh, i hope everybody is doing all right okay thank you so going to this next question 
why doesn't everyone get healed? <laughs> why doesn't everyone get healed? Now, as ministers, right, we have to be very quick to admit that everyone we pray for doesn't get healed. Yes or no? Right? Everyone that I have prayed for has not gotten healed. Uh, and so we, we qu very quickly admit that, you know, yes, everyone that I prayed for have not gotten healed. But what is what should be your response to that? Yeah, I mean, I'm, what what should be your response to that? I mean, there could be a lot of reasons why people don't get healed. But what should our response be? Should your response be that okay, I prayed for ten people, uh, no one got healed, so I'm going to stop praying? Is that going to be our response? No. So you're yeah, sure. You know, everybody that you pray for, minister healing and deliverance for, uh, may not get healed. But that is that's the reality, and we admit to that, right? We are not going to fabricate things. Is like you know, I'm not going to go on a church pulpit and say I prayed for ten people. Uh, all ten, if it really happened, great, right? I prayed for ten people. All ten of them were healed. But I am not going to go on the pulpit and, and lie, right? I prayed for ten people. Uh, when no one got healed, I'm not going to go and say for ten, all of them were. What's happening? I am fabricating, isn't it? And so it's it's okay as ministers of God, as leaders, as pastors, as elders to admit that not everybody, every time we pray for is getting healed. But that should not stop us from continuing to minister healing and deliverance. Are you with me? right? And we do not compromise the truth. And we don't compromise the truth. That means it's simply saying that you don't change your understanding of God. Just because everyone that you prayed for did not get healed, like then you don't. It's like from the next Sunday you don't start changing. Okay, no, Jesus is. Uh, it's not His will to heal everyone. I don't think so. What what I said last Sunday was different. You know, this Sunday I learned something because I prayed for ten people, nobody got healed. I think this. Uh, you don't change the theology, the doctrine, and who is the perfect theology? Jesus. You don't change the truth. We do not compromise the truth. Okay, you have a question. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, uh, we'll, uh, as you say, uh, the right thing to do is to continue praying for yes. the other people who would come and the person who you already prayed. Yes. But where would you, how would you actually draw a line or conclude why the healing was not done for XYZ? Sure, why the healing was not done for XYZ. Okay, thanks for that question, Akhil. Um, so, again, if you did not, if his question was not clear, uh, Akhil's question uh, was uh, where do we draw the line and how, when do we? How do we? Or when do we arrive at a conclusion saying both with an answer why this person was not healed? Now, uh, there's nothing wrong in God's end of the equation. There's nothing wrong in His end of the equation, right? We know what an equation is, right? A plus B the whole square. That's one side of the equation is equal to. Okay, oh yeah, whatever, guys. A plus B, the whole square is equal to A plus B plus 2 uh, something, 2AB. Two <laughs> That's the other side of the equation, right? God's side of the equation is never wrong. He has accomplished everything what He had to do. He has given us His covenant name. He is our Jehovah Rapha. He is our healer. He has he is shed His blood on the cross. By His stripes, we are healed. It's all been established. Right? It now it all just comes down to us. Okay, so you know I've ministered healing and deliverance. This person did not get healed. I go back into the secret place. I seek the Lord for more of His anointing, for more of His presence to flow through me. I make myself. I invite Him. That that is it. I continue to work on my end of the equation. Right? While understanding with humility that He is the healer. I am the vessel. I work for him. He doesn't work for me. That means he may choose to give an explanation sometimes, but he never owes us an explanation. It's very important, people, that we understand that. 
he doesn't work for us we work for him sometimes he may choose to give us an explanation saying okay akil the reason that you're going through this is i'm i have something big planned for you he may choose to give you an explanation but he never owes us an explanation right so where we begin to kind of fall is when we think as christians that god owes us an explanation some 115 was 3 he is god he will choose whatever he pleases <laughs> right okay so um that's like the fundamental thing akil i hope that kind of answers your question okay so we don't compromise the truth uh, we, we we simply admit you know i don't know uh, you know why everybody gets healed but we're going to continue to pursue um uh, yeah shani i uh, have a question yeah is it fair to say because everything has been done everything we want from god has already been done healing was already done across before the foundation of that, the world so if we pray for ourselves so we don't get healed we pray for somebody else they'll get healed shouldn't we say that partly is our kind of fault because we just have to receive it from him it's already been done so is that is that fair to say that that is something dealing with us because it's not god because it's already been done so is that fair to say that yes so it, it again comes down to us isn't it so you know we learn to receive what's been given right uh, we learn to receive what's been given to us uh, and and that's the journey we are all on right how do we learn to encash this blank check that's been given to us right how do we learn to encash this blank god's given us this blank check with a signature on it how much ever you want whatever you want it's yours now i can take that blank check and keep it in the bank locker and lock it and you know is there any use of it no right so i'm going to take that check so so that means healing physical healing this that everything i'm going to put in it because it's been given to us and right and so we continue to express and act on our faith shani so yes okay thank you thank you okay um let's continue um so we, we are kind of in a place where we know that okay we simply just because everyone doesn't get healed that shouldn't stop you from ministering healing and deliverance yes and that shouldn't cause you to change the truth or start preaching something else are you with me right uh, or don't even try to speculate as it says in your notes uh, or simply admit i don't know why you know this didn't happen but we'll continue to press in as a church as a family uh, as a friend as a minister let's continue praying for this let's seek him right a pray through till breakthrough how's that we pray through till breakthrough okay if you haven't already listened to the song please go and listen to the apc music song god of breakthrough <laughs> it's really cool okay uh this next point says ask god for insight and keep on ministering to the individual right like we've just addressed that ask god for insight what is the another word for insight wisdom wisdom yes another word for wisdom is insight another word for insight is wisdom okay so we ask god for wisdom um we can do an entire semester on the topic of wisdom guys actually yeah, and that would still not be enough <laughs> uh because that is so profound it's so deep it's uh it's not just knowing how to do a certain things right it's and proverbs talks about wisdom in such a deep manner right it says uh with wisdom god laid the foundations of the earth with wisdom he created uh, uh you know the universe that we see and then we see in proverbs chapter 8 that wisdom was present now suddenly wisdom is not just uh used as uh as uh, what do we say is something that you can possess no wisdom in proverbs 8 is suddenly is referring to a person wisdom is a person and in isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 onwards we see that holy spirit is the spirit of wisdom that's one of the things right is the spirit of understanding is the spirit of wisdom is the spirit of knowledge is the spirit of counsel and suddenly we see wisdom is not just a thing that you can have as in you know like a skill it is a person and so when this point says ask god for insight or for wisdom it's saying pursue me 
because it is with me you know i have all the answers are you all with me okay uh, yes any questions any thoughts are you learning something So we continue ask God, asking God for insight and wisdom, uh, and we continue pursuing His presence. And uh, and there's a point that says, glorify God and not the condition. Glorify God and not the condition. So we never magnify the sickness. Magnify is what? Making it big. Magnification, isn't it? Oh, it's like, oh it's cancer no chance no stage four uh, or anything whatever you know um, we do not magnify the sickness right whatever name that a sickness has whatever disease a name has we know a name that is higher yes or no right the name of Jesus that is high above every other name that means his name is higher about any name of any cancer that is ever present. Do we believe that? Do you believe that? Yes, that his name is high above every other name, right? And so again, if, if that fundamental truth is deep in our hearts, uh, we will never magnify a sickness. Right? You will not be impressed by the sickness. You don't have to be. Are you with me? Okay. So, and and another misconception that people have, that Christians will have, is that um, God is using the sickness, uh, you know, to teach us something. God is using the sickness to teach us something, like a lesson, right? I'm, I'm sure you've heard people say, like, you know, brother, I think I'm going through this because God is trying to teach me something. You know, brother, I have this disease in me because I think God is trying to, God is uh, teaching something to me. Uh, but that same brother or sister will also go to the doctor and hospital to get better. Now, if, if you think that God is teaching you something, why do you want to get better? You can allow God to teach you. you know? Why do you want to go to the doctor? You know? Um, no. God will use you in spite of your sickness, not because of it. Can I say that again? God will use you in spite. Now, in spite, I might have, uh, for example, like, uh, let's say I have chronic migraine. Right? Uh, by the way, I do have chronic migraines. <laughs> uh, so, God will use me in spite of that. Are you with me? So, look at that, uh, that section. It's very important. I'll say that I'm just reading it for us. God can use a person in spite of sickness, bodily ailments, and any physical problem. However, this does not automatically mean that the condition they are in is in God's best interest for them. God is not using them because of their sickness or ailment. Okay, very important, guys. Look at that. God is not using them because of their sickness or ailment. God works in spite of the situation. He is not limited by our limitations. Amen? God is not limited by our limitations. He works because of His purpose and grace given to us in Jesus Christ. Okay, so He will choose to work in spite of our sickness, not because of our sickness. Are you all with me? All right, so we keep pressing Him for more. Um, okay, let's... I'm going to skip. Uh, wait, there's this next section that call, says, why are some healings gradual? Why are some healings gradual? And I will pair that with the next question as well. Why are some healings partial and not complete? OK, why are some healings gradual? If you were to ask me that question, no, I, we can go through the entire section, what is there in the textbook. Uh, but if I have, have to summarize that entire section, why are some healings gradual and why are some healings partial and not complete? I would say, I don't know. That's the summary of, the whole, of what that whole section is, that I don't know. 
we don't know why some healings are gradual. But again, it comes down to that question. Will you stop ministering healing and deliverance? No. What is our response? We continue pursuing. right? We continue to minister healing and deliverance until we see a complete breakthrough, full healing. You continue to press in. Partial healing or not, you continue to press in. Are you with me? Yes? OK. Warren, I see your hands are raised. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, when we were talking about gradual healing, I think uh, there was one instance in, in, in the Bible where Jesus was, you know, he, for the blind man, he made a, with a spittle, he made something and put it on his eyes. And it wasn't the first time he couldn't see straight away. It, little by little, he got complete vision. So, I mean, I think, isn't that something that is even Jesus encountered as well? A gradual healing. Hey, uh, Warren, I want to apologize because this uh, speaker is something really off with this. Um, it's breaking. I think there's some technical error, Warren. Um, but do you mind just typing out the question in, in a brief way, if that's possible? So sorry, guys. OK, um, apologies. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'll wait for you to type out the question. But yeah, until uh, Warren types of that question, let's look at that section that says, why are some healings partial and not complete? OK, can everybody look at that section, please? Why are some healings partial and not complete? Right. Another thing we, uh, we may observe when ministering healing is that sometimes people with multiple problems get healed of some conditions and continue to have their ailments persist in their bodies. OK, so what does that mean? You've prayed for someone, they've been healed partially, but then they continue to have uh, you know, some issues, some uh, ailments in their bodies. Here again, we will not have all the reasons why complete healing did not occur. That means we don't know. We simply do not know. But we must thank the Lord for every small progress in recovery that we see. OK? You know, if, if a person came in a wheelchair, uh, you know, he's now able to stand, but not able to fully walk freely or uh, run. Because that's the full healing that we're looking for, isn't it? A person came in uh, in a wheelchair. We want that person to get up and run and jump and walk. And, you know, we want to do that, isn't it? But if a person is able to just stand up from the wheelchair, we give thanks to God. It's like, Lord, we thank you for this. And we continue to praying for complete healing. Are you with me? Right? So uh, we keep praising God. We keep pressing in to see complete healing and deliverance. Continue to encourage the individual and not in any way shame or condemn the person. We do not make statements like, OK, I think you are not fully healed because of uh, you. I think there's some pride in you. What are you doing? You are shaming the person. You are condemning the person. Right? Nowhere you see where Jesus condemned someone. Yes or no? Okay, all right. Okay, so Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 8, verse 20 to 26. Let's, uh, let's go through that. Yes, um, so let's see the Mark, Mark chapter 8, verse 20 to 26. Oh, oops. Okay. Are you able to see me? Because my laptop just went blank. <laughs> All right, let's uh, read this, okay? Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 8, verse 22 to 26, a classic example of partial healing, okay? Um, and they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. Uh, 23, and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. And then Jesus laid his hands uh, on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes, and he, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. And he sent to his home saying, 
uh, do not even enter the village. Okay. So yeah, that's a classic example. One of the examples where we see that Jesus prayed twice. Okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, and it it's fine, isn't it? Uh, what we were trying to address in partial healing or gradual healing is that with every step of the way, we continue to give thanks to God. We continue to give praise to God. Right. Uh, Warren, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure if I've answered your question, but then what I'm trying to say is that it's okay. You know, we continue to press in for full healing. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, let, let's go towards the, uh, the latter part of the chapter. Three heart attitudes that allow God to work miracles. Three heart attitudes that allow God to work miracles. And I'll uh, end with this uh, section and I'll let you guys go through the last part of the chapter. Just read through it, okay? Uh, three heart attitudes that allow God to work miracles. And the first one is faith. When ministering to people, we must walk in faith, expectancy, and intense desire. We minister healing and deliverance with faith in our hearts. Our unbelief can be a hindrance to the power of God flowing through us. Uh, faith is simple. Uh, faith is what? Spelled what? How do you spell faith? <laughs> I would spell faith as R-I-S-K. Risk. Okay. You take that step. You take that risk in praying for people. Uh, that, that's what it is all about, right? We in uh, Some of our young people, uh, uh, youth pastor, uh, they take them out, and we've, which we've done before, is we take them out, we ask for people, you know, in the streets, like, hey, is there anything that we can pray for you? It's a step of faith. It's a huge risk. <laughs> you just don't know how people will react, isn't it? But it's what we are called to do. We are, we are called to take that step of faith, to take that risk and pray. Isn't it? Uh, you know, sometimes we act like, you know, the whole healing and deliverance depends on us. It's Jesus, right? He's the one, again, coming back to the fundamental root thing. It's He's the one who's going to minister, who's going to flow through you. And so you just allow that to happen. So we walk in faith, we minister in faith. At the same time, we also learn to receive in faith. Okay, and second one is expectancy. What does that mean? You have an attitude of expectancy. Yeah. Expecting for it to be answered. Yeah. Okay. Shani, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you know what's going to happen. Expectancy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, expectant. Uh, so, you, have you heard of this word called hope? Hope, yeah, H-O-P-E. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry if I've used this before, but uh, in our context, when we use the word hope, it is more of a, like a wishful thinking, okay? In earthly context, in hope equals wishful thinking. That means, I hope it rains today. I hope it doesn't rain today so that we can play, right? I hope there's no traffic jam because I have a flight to catch and the airport is so far away. Right? I hope we don't have this class today so I can sleep extra. <laughs> right? What is that? It's all wishful thinking, isn't it? Um, but biblical hope is, it simply means joyful anticipation of what is good. Okay? Biblical hope is joyful anticipation expectation of what is good okay so our hope when we say our hope is in the lord uh, we know that okay the end of the story that you know our hope in jesus is rock solid it's not wishful thinking it's not may or may not it is 100 percent certain are you with me right and if uh, and uh, and so when we when we are praying for healing or ministering healing and deliverance, 
we go with an expectant heart. That means a joyful anticipation of what is good. We put our hope in him. That means, okay, he may heal, he may not heal. We don't go with that attitude. It's like, I'm going to go just like the leper went, just like the centurion went. Just say your word. I know the power in your word. Just say it. And so we, we go with that expectation. Yes? And then finally, intense desire. It's not just desire, but intense desire. That means to have a burning desire for more. Okay? We need to have so faith, expectancy, and intense desire. Okay, so those are the three heart attitudes that allow God to work miracles. And finally, hindrances to receiving healing. Let's go through those points. Some of the hindrances to receiving healing. Um, we never criticize or condemn or blame or shame the individual when ministering. It's a big no-no. Okay, as a minister of God, as a leader, you we never criticize. Say, okay, your sickness is because of this. You don't shame the person. And some of them do that with an intention to put another person down. We don't do that. Right? We remember very carefully that uh, you know we don't minister and don't work that way. Okay, so some of the hindrances is again lack of knowledge, lack of faith, considering the ailment as the will of God, mm. lack of persistent desire to get well. Lack of persistent desire to get well. That means you've just given up. Oh, this is the will of God for me to be sick. I'm going to just, you know, I give up. I'm, this is how I'm going to be. I don't want prayers from anybody. I'm not going to go for any prayer meetings. Uh, you know, I'm not going to even let anybody pray for me. It's what it is. I will die like this. Okay. Uh, being passive in resisting sickness, wrong postures. Uh, God will heal in this time. Whenever it happens, whatever happens, uh, it's, it's God's will and so on. Okay. So there's a bunch of uh, pointers that's given out to us uh, that, that will cause as a hindrance to receive healing. Okay. And uh, that's the second chapter uh, where we've addressed a lot of questions, uh, fundamental questions, fundamental truths. Uh, and I hope that this has been a uh, helpful or an eye opener in how we minister healing and deliverance. Right? Are you guys all okay? Oh, yeah, oh, you guys online, all good? Okay. All right. Thank you for your questions as well, Shani, Warren, everybody uh, who. Yeah, awesome. Um, so the next class, we move into chapter three. It's one of my favorite chapters. Um, Cool. All right. Great. Thanks for joining in, guys. God bless you. Have a wonderful day ahead. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.